it's one of those truths like life is a terminal disease. There's nobody's getting out of here alive. Nobody. In the same way, unless you attend to this business with yourself, you will leave here dissatisfied. Because once you reach to a certain point, you see your faults all too clearly. You know where you're wrong. And alhamdulillah, Allah keeps forgiving you and forgiving you for the wrong things that you do. But nevertheless, it's irritating to keep on doing these wrong things. So part of all of these things we've talked about of why and where and everything else is this question of when, another part of the puzzle. And of course, what I said in the beginning of talking about this when is Allah says, in Allah la yugairu ma bi kawmin. Allah never changes the state of people, hatta yugairu ma bi anfusihim, until they change what is inside of them. Wa idha arad Allahu bi kawmin su an fam la marad Allahu. When Allah desires evil for a people, there's no averting it. وَمَا لَهُمْ مِن دُونِهِ مِن وَلِي And they have no protector aside from Allah. So nothing is going to change until we change ourselves. If you look at the situation that we're living in, a few years back there was a famous poet, maybe many of you have heard of him, William Butler Yeats, and he wrote, Turning and turning in the widening gyre, the falcon cannot hear the falconer. Things fall apart. The center cannot hold. Anarchy is loosed upon the world. The blood-dimmed tide is loosed, and everywhere the ceremony of innocence is drowned. The best lack all conviction while the worst are full of impassionate intensity. This is the situation that we're facing. So, how, what can we do, you know, really about this? This thing has just come on, I don't know why. What we see today in the time of our lives, and what is left of our lives, all of the windows are burning. People are living everywhere under occupation. This is what's called a Jumat al wida And I'll speak about that a little bit in the Friday khutbah, inshallah, unless the city decides to do it because it's the day of Palestine. The day of Widda, the, the last of the Jumas, is always reserved for a remembrance of our brothers and sisters in Palestine and by extension in Gaza and in Syria and in, uh, you know, uh, parts of Russia, Chechen and, and Dagestan and in Turkmenistan and in the Philippines and in Burma and in Assam and in, uh, in the place in India, uh, Kashmir, and in Pakistan and Afghanistan and in Iraq and in Yemen and in Bahrain and in Somalia and in Burkina Faso and all these places, people are living in this very difficult situation. This is the world in which we live. And we here have been blessed. Make no doubt about it. We've all been blessed. We've been blessed with clothing. We've been blessed with food, even in Ramadan, mashallah. They work very hard in the kitchen and produce beautiful meals morning and night. We eat every day. Uh, we all have a place. We don't fear that some soldiers are going to break in the front door here and shoot us. But in some places, Muslims are sitting in a room like this, and that happens. 
It's a situation that people are living under. And that's even to say that it does sometimes even happen here. There was a woman by the name of Shaima al-Awadi, who was an Iraqi immigrant and mother of five, who was brutally beaten to death in her suburban Southern California home by skinheads, who didn't like the fact that she was a Muslim and wanted her to go home. So this is something, you know, that's also a part of our lives and that we have to understand. As Siddhi says many times everywhere, the people are crying. And they are crying not only because of this injustice and aggression, but the deeper and injustice and aggression that is changing and killing life upon this planet in which we're living. I don't know if you follow. I heard somebody arguing this the other day, somebody from here. There's no such thing as climate change. But I would suggest to you, if you look very carefully, you can see that certain things are happening in the world. There's tremendous flooding going on because of the melting of the polar ice caps. All of these things, all of these things are happening. So it's very convenient to think when. We think of when, well, when Jesus comes, when Isa comes, when the Mahdi comes, all of that will come to an end, and that will all be fixed. Hmm? All of these things will be fixed. And yet we see this thing blowing up the mountaintops and the fracking of the aquifers and the poisoning of the water, sucking out the gas. And everywhere, as Bob Marley says, is greed. Everywhere is war. Everywhere is death. And the people are crying. And they're asking, when? Where is peace? When is justice? Where is mercy? But this is not the subjects <coughs> that I tried to bring to you are not abstract subjects. These are very real things that we're facing as, as individuals and we're facing in the world. And that's why I try to, to bring them. I mean, some people like to think, you know, about, you know, Sufism is a kind of, you know, Everything is fine, we're all sweet, and it's all like that. But these are very real things that are happening to us as a community of human beings. And in Sahih Tirmidhi, it said that even if the entire duration of the world's existence has already been exhausted, and only one day is left before the Day of Judgment, Allah will expand that to such a length of time as to accommodate the kingdom of a person who will be called by my name and by my father's name. For I am Al-Mahdi, the guided one. I am the Imam of the time. And I am the one who fills the earth with justice, just as it was filled with injustice and tyranny. So we tend to think, oh, this person will come. But if you go deep, and I want you to listen very, very carefully here. If you go deep, you will understand that this that people are waiting for is inside of everybody's self. This person that everybody's waiting for, this Isa, this Mahdi, is inside of yourself. That's why he said, in this world, there's a wall. And on one side of the wall, it's hatred and killing and murder and all of these things and corruption. And on the other side of the wall, in that wall, there's a gate. And on the other side of the wall, everywhere is peace. But he says, Ya you nafsun mutmaina, O you soul is at peace, enter my garden. And he doesn't say enter my garden in the future. He says enter my garden. So that means that what the responsibility is when we get to the highest level of all of these things is that you come to peace inside of yourself. That if you wait, you may wait forever and you may die waiting. Like I thought when I first went to Palestine 
in the 1960s, I thought, oh, there will be peace, peace will come, you know, that they've got to solve this problem, this is a terrible problem. And now it's like 2012, and it's worse than it was then. In Kashmir, I don't know if any of you have been to Kashmir, but Kashmir is one of the most beautiful places in the world. The Vale of Kashmir is famous throughout the world. It's inconceivable, almost, that this would be a place, and listen to this number, 750,000 troops are stationed in Kashmir. Kashmir is this big, Afghanistan is this big. Afghanistan has 125,000 troops. Can you imagine 750,000 troops in an area like that? It's the same as the Holy Land. The Holy Land is like the difference distance between New York and, and uh, uh, no, not Washington, D.C. Uh, not south of Philadelphia, you know. No, Connecticut's north. Uh, the uh, uh, Baltimore, Maryland, that distance. And yet, everywhere it has caused problems all over the world, you see. So these little things, and, and what it is, there are all these people, people, that's what we are, people, right? There are all these people living there, and some of them call themselves Jews, and some of them call themselves Muslims, and some of them call themselves Christians. And yet they're not able to resolve their problem. They're not able to make peace. They're not able to find peace. And they kill one another and do terrible things to one another. And all of this comes because the people will not change themselves. So what you have to realize is, is that this job that you have is the job of changing yourself. This is what you have to do. This is the only thing really that matters. All of this other stuff, running around and so on and so forth, forming organizations, who's going to be the president, who's going to be the prime minister, who's going to be the head of it, who's going to be the treasurer, who's going to be the... It's all for nothing. All for nothing. Except for personal aggrandizement. Yes, it's for that. But in terms of bringing about a better world, none of that will bring about a better world. The only thing that will bring about a better world is if you change yourself. That's the only thing. And when is whenever you do it. It's not some future thing. It's in the present. And what it is, and I touched upon it the other day, and I will touch upon it again, is that inside of you, once the heart has been cleaned out, once the garbage, you know, it's like you have a big yard sale. Get rid of all that stuff inside of yourself. And there is that pure space. You know, one time, Sidna Musa, alayhi salam, was traveling in the desert, and he came across a Bedu. And the Bedu, as many, you know, people who live in a very simple circumstances, they have very good kesh or sight. They see people as they are. And then he saw Sidna Musa, alayhi salam, as this very pure being. And he went to invite him home. So he invites him to his home. And in his home, as many Bedouin people have, as those of you who have traveled in these countries, they always have one room that's better than any room in the house. It's the best. If there's a, if there's a 52 inch television to be bought, it's in that room. And they never use that room. Chairs, armchair, everything, everything like that. Who is that room for? Yes. The guest. Not for themselves. They themselves living poor. But they have one room that they've set aside for the guest. And it's perfect. As perfect as they can make it. It's painted, it's clean, it's washed. 
It's cleaned every day. It's freshened every day. There's flowers in it if flowers are to be found or whatever it is, and that's for the guest. So he invites Musa, and he said, this is God's room. This room is the room of Allah, and this room is for you. And so immediately Musa, who's a prophet, alayhi salam, said, now son, you know, or whatever, don't say that because God does not have a room. Allah doesn't have a room somewhere. Allah is, and he begins to go into this long, you know, thing about Allah and who Allah is and how Allah doesn't have a room and Allah doesn't need anything and so on and so on and so forth like that. And the person is crushed by this. And Musa goes off, never stays. And then Allah grabs Musa by the neck when he gets out on his walk. He grabs him by the neck. He said, Musa, how could you have done this? You broke that person's heart. That person can't understand what you're talking about. He's a simple person. He wanted to give you only the best. For my sake, he wanted to give you the best. And you denied him that possibility. So in this way, inside of ourselves, we build a room. And we clean this room, and we paint this room, and we bring the best things that we have, and that's what's in this room. And this is the room for Allah. This is the room because Allah says, nothing contains me but the heart. Huh? of the mu'min, the one who loves for their fellow human being what they love for themselves. Right. Now, Allah in a very shy way, hard to think of Allah being shy, but Allah in a very shy way as a matter of speaking, because of course Allah does not have hands or feet or heads or things like that, puts his toe inside your room. Just your to his toe. Just a little bit of him inside of the room. And the room inside of your heart, inside of your being, becomes lit by this small presence. And you keep this room clean. And pretty soon Allah puts a foot inside this room. And then another foot inside this room. Until Allah takes up residence inside of your being. This is who you're waiting for. Not somebody who's coming in some distant future. Not some perfect prophet. Not something like that. That may come. It will come. Because the Prophet has said it will come. But what you want is you want this to come inside of yourself. Finished with the religions, the teachers, the path, the practices, the, all of these things. What's the purpose of it? The purpose is that, you know the little song I sang at the beginning, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine. It's like that. That this light enters into your being, becomes a part of yourself. And this light, because love is self-communicative. You all know that. When you love, when you love, people feel your love. Isn't it so? If you are mean, if you are rough, if you are tough, if you are crude, like that with other human beings, they don't like you. They don't. Because nobody likes that kind of a person. But if they feel this love coming from you, they feel this kindness coming from you, they feel this mercy coming from you, they feel this compassion coming from you, they feel these things coming from you, they're touched by it, isn't it so? And this is how the world has changed, my friends. This is how the world has changed. Because that person feels something and they want 
that because I remember when I first used to listen to Siddhi many years ago, he used to say this thing. He doesn't say it so much anymore, but it used to be, you know how he gets on to things and he repeats the same things over and over again over a period of time. It's a particular thing that he's on to. He said, used to say, the whole world is thirsty. The whole world is longing for this love. Everything wants this love. This is what satisfies people. So when this love, through this process that you've undergone, leaving the asphala saphalin, going into the world of, of morals and ethics and religion or whatever you want to call it, seeing that, yes, that's true, but it's not followed, and then finding the teacher, and the teacher giving you this and, 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 and all this process, it comes to the point where this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. So that when he says to the Prophet about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I have not sent you as a mercy to all of the creation, that you begin in your way, small as it may be, as limited as it may be, or as expansive as it may be according to your capacity, you begin to touch the lives of other human beings with whom you come into contact and they feel that love. And having felt that love, they ask you, start to ask you questions. 